Okay, let's take a look at the ladybug rotation lab. In the first activity, you put the ladybug on the rotating platform, set it in motion, and your job is to sketch the velocity and acceleration vectors for three different instants in time. So let's draw a picture of this. There's a platform, there's the center of rotation, and you put the ladybug down somewhere on here, maybe right there. There's some spots. So this ladybug is some distance from the center. And it will rotate around in a circular path. And you'll find when you do this simulation that at each point along the path, it doesn't matter which time you're looking at, the acceleration vector points toward the center of that circle. And let's say that this is rotating this way. It's rotating counterclockwise. Then the velocity vector is perpendicular to the acceleration vector. In other words, it's tangent to the circular path that the ladybug is moving on. So at any other points or any other instance in time, maybe over here, you'll find the acceleration vector still has the same magnitude that's pointing toward the center. Velocity vector still has that same magnitude and is tangent circular path to maybe one other point over here. Acceleration vector still toward the center. Velocity vector is still tangent to that path. So at all points, these two vectors are at right angles. That's always true when um, you're rotating at a constant rate. If the platform were speeding up or slowing down, then the velocity vector would not necessarily be uh, perpendicular to the acceleration vector, because that acceleration vector would include a tangential component in addition to its centripetal component. All right, next question. So that was question one. Now question two is place a, a second bug on this platform at a different distance. So maybe we'll put a second bug on the very edge. And what you'll find is that there is um, a greater velocity vector and a greater acceleration vector, but they still point in those same directions. Velocity vector is still tangent to the circular path. The acceleration vector is still centripetal, pointing toward the center. So you can do that for any other points uh, along the circle for the second bug, and you'll find that it's velocity vector is always tangential. It's bigger than if it were at that smaller radius. Its acceleration vector is centripetal. It has a bigger magnitude than this smaller circle. Uh, maybe when you did this lab, you put the second bug at a smaller radius than the ladybug. In that case, its velocity vector and acceleration vector will have smaller magnitudes than the ladybug's vectors. Okay, so this is questions one and two, both in one picture. Question three, uh, consider the statement, all points on a rigid object have the same angular acceleration and angular speed. 
So how could you use the, the bugs in Ladybug Revolution to test this idea? Well, we kind of already did that in questions one and two. We noticed that uh, the, uh, the velocity vectors and acceleration vectors just are the same along a particular radius and as that radius expands, the velocity and acceleration vectors increase in magnitude, but the angular velocity and angular speed quantities don't change in magnitude. And you can see that um, directly by going into the controls in the lab and looking at the graphs of um, angular acceleration and angular speed. That's um, one of the options on the, the graphs page, the second tab in, uh, in that simulation. So you can look directly at the graphs and you'll find that it doesn't matter where on the disk you are, it doesn't matter what radius you're at, uh, all points have the same angular speed and the same angular acceleration. And furthermore, they all undergo the same angular displacement. You can watch a graph of the uh, angle versus time, and you see that the angle versus time undergoes the same amount of change no matter where you put the bugs on the disk. It only depends on the, the rotation rate of the spinning platform. Okay, so we discussed question three. Check. Now question four. How is tangential speed represented in Ladybug Revolution? Well, the tangential speed is represented by the, the length of that velocity vector at each point. Do all points on a rigid object have the same tangential speed? No, they don't. That's what we explored in questions one and two. We saw that this tangential speed increases as you go farther out. It depends on the, the radius of the circle. And mathematically, we've learned that V equals R omega. This is constant. Omega is the same for all points on the disk. Omega tells you how many radians per second the thing is rotating at. But depending on where on the object you are, the radius is different. So the speed changes. And that tangential speed is faster the farther out from the center you are, the greater the radius is. We've learned about three types of acceleration. So let me remind you of those three types. We learned about tangential, centripetal, and total. And remember, a total has a magnitude given by the, the Pythagorean theorem. In other words, a total vector is the vector sum of uh, tangential and centripetal accelerations. So describe how the simulation can be used to find each of these types of accelerations for the bugs. Well, when you get this disk spinning, when you get this platform spinning, in the simulation it just spins at a constant rate, meaning that the tangential acceleration in all your explorations has been zero. So it, this only changes when you're, um, when you're clicking and dragging and getting that disk up to speed. But most of the time, uh, AT is zero because you're rotating at a constant rate. So in, in fact, we can just say 
this acceleration is zero, essentially the whole time, which means that, uh, well, we know the centripetal acceleration, the, uh, the simulation tells you that. There's a graph where you can select uh, looking at the acceleration if you want. So the total acceleration is just the centripetal acceleration since AT is zero for all our explorations.